Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to keep working on this mobile nav project. Now, in the last video, we just made this little icon that has the uh, animated change with a little JavaScript. I want to keep working on this page, and that's going to require uh, a relatively easy inclusion because I want the side panel to slide in and out, but it's also going to require a couple of cleanup elements for some changes that I want to make. One of the first things that I want to change is the location of this hamburger icon. I realize that this is actually going to be sliding. The position of the icon is based on the position of the slide panel. And of course, when you click it, it's going to move and it kind of takes away from the visual effect. So instead, I want to take this hamburger icon icon, move it all the way over here to the top right corner of the header. Um, and of course, this is going to be okay because when a user sees this icon, they're going to be on a narrow device, maybe even a phone. So the icon is going to be really into the body of the work. So let's jump over to the markup. And this is the JavaScript. I'm going to get to that soon enough. But let's see, I'm going to move up here to the HTML. And I want to take my anchor tag which is my little icon with the little three divs. I'm going to move it away from that side panel, that, mo that mobile nav. And I'm going to put it down here in the header. And I can stick it right up here, the very first thing in the header. In fact, I'm just going to go ahead and clean up some of the indentation a bit. And there we go. So now that anchor tag is in a new location in the header. Now, because of that move, I do need to change some of the anchor's positioning. So if I move up to my styles, my ink, my icon, position absolute, that's going to stay the same. I still want it to be 8 pixels from the top, but instead of negative 78 from the right, I just want it to be 8 pixels from the right. I'm going to save that and browser refresh, and now it's over here on the top right side. And everything still functions. Now I want to make a couple of other changes too, because I started to realize that if we were looking at this, on a phone, and I'll just jump over to a standard iPhone 6, 7, 8, which is about 375 pixels of width. That means I'm going to definitely need to reduce the size of this panel over here. Um, and I can also reduce the size of this icon. It doesn't need to be quite that big, but I also don't want to make it too small. So I'm going to leave it here in mobile mode, jump back over to the markup, and I realize I can start to play with some of the sizing. Now the first thing I'll do is I'll take that mobile nav container, which is currently set at about 320, and I'll just go ahead and set it to 300, make it a bit smaller to kind of get it out of the way. And now I want to focus on making this icon a bit smaller. So what I'm going to do with this icon is instead of 70 by 60, I'm going to knock it down to 50 by 44. Yeah. Now, at 50 by 44, that's pretty good, but I want to make a couple of other changes too. The width of the little bars inside of there, I'm going to dial those back to 44, and I'll reduce the height of those. Instead of 10, we'll do 8. Now basically, as long as our overall button is at least 44 by 44 pixels, it's still a really good size. Background color is going to stay the same. Okay, so I'm good with those sizes. And that, of course, is going to reduce the overall size of the, the button. Now I still need to reduce or change the positioning of the little divs. So I'll just jump over here and actually gonna start the first one about five pixels from the top. Second one's gonna be about 18 from the top. Last one's gonna be about 31 pixels from the top. I did a little math, a little trial and error to kind of get those numbers. And from the left, I'll knock those back a bit. Three, three and three. And so now those three fit nicely in the space. Now to kind of see it in the close status, let me just change the icon to close. That's going to give us our X, and I just have to change a little bit about the X as well. So the left is also going to be from three pixels out, and the top placement I can change. Actually, I found that 18 from the top looks pretty good. Otherwise, the rotation and the opacity can all stay the same. Save that, browser refresh. Cool, the X is in a good spot. And notice I can still click and I get the nice animation. Now with that reduction in size there, I can be a little bit better about si sizing the width of that um, panel. So I can just move up here. And instead of 310 or 300, I could try 310. And that's pretty close. It might be a little bit off technically. 
we can do some math. If we're dealing with a 375 pixel width overall for a phone, and if I subtract the 50 pixel width for the orange box, and then I subtract 16 pixels, which is the eight pixels on the left and eight pixels on the right if I want balance, I get to 309. So really, 309 pixels will be ideal. Go ahead and refresh that, and there we go. So now I just want to get it so that this side panel slides away and comes back whenever the user clicks this button. So let's go ahead and tackle that side of things. Now on my markup, I think to make this a little bit easier, I'm going to change some of the HTML, be more specific here. I'm going to go ahead and call this ID equals MN panel, which is my mobile nav panel. And then I can be a little bit nicer with my classes here, and I can just go ahead and use something like um, MN panel open. So then I can refer to open and close similar to what I'm doing with the icon. It's okay that the panel is empty though. So now that I've got that, I can head up to my styling, and I'll change this out to hashtag MN panel, and then I can work on MN panel open and MN panel close. Now for MN panel open, I'm going to do a transform translate x and 0% because that's where I want it to be at its default position. Whereas you notice for MN panel close, the translate x is negative 100%, which means it's going to move to the left by 100% of the width of that panel. I could have put negative 309 pixels in there, but not necessary since we have that value up here. Now that that's taken care of, let me run down to my script and modify that. It's going to be pretty easy. And we can just modify exactly what we have. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set another variable on here. So I'm going to let MN panel be equal to document.get element by ID and then panel, makes things nice and convenient. And then I can simply add a new set attribute. MN panel dot set attribute panel open. So basically when my close button is visible, that means my panel is open, so I need to see the open state of it. Similar, MN panel dot set attribute, changing the class. So when the open button is state, I'm in a closed panel. Okay, I like that. And I can just head over to my browser, refresh, and I'm going to start to get that result. However, I want a little animation effect on there. So with my MN panel, there it is. Transition, I'll change, um, actually I just needed to change the transform instead of all. 300 milliseconds, linear. Save that, browser, refresh, and now we have that nice slide in, slide out. Now you can see that my main menu is looking pretty messy, but that's okay. I'm simply going to do some responsive rules, some media queries, and I'm going to have that menu hide whenever the page gets too narrow, even under a thousand pixels, I think. But that is the gist for basically shrinking our open close icon, our hamburger icon, and then applying the slide out effect for where the mobile navigation is going to go. Talk to you later.